Earlier today, Baldur's Gate 3 got its highly anticipated Patch 5 update. This was a roughly 30 gigabyte download, but patched a much larger 130 gigabytes of files. Which, yeah, that's honestly pretty crazy. So crazy that Larian themselves recommended just reinstalling the game instead of installing this update, which I think that's the first time I've ever seen a developer do that. But it is a testament to how much content was in this update, with easily the biggest part of the new update being this new epilogue. Because, yeah, they literally added in an entire epilogue with unique interactions with basically every companion in the game, as well as interactions with several other notable characters. The way this new epilogue works is after beating the game and having that final cut to black, Withers will then call you, as well as all of your companions, back to camp. This is a full six months after the final events of the main story, so you get a nice retrospective on what all of these characters have been up to. You're gonna have a full suite of new dialogue with basically every companion, so you will literally just get to find out what they've been doing for the past six months. You'll find out which paths they ended up following, and of course, a huge portion of this will be dictated by the decisions you made during your playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3. So you're epilogue on one character will look somewhat different compared to another character. So naturally, I don't want to spoil this for you, but there are going to be a variety of different outcomes based on some of the secondary quest choices and even some of the more minor decisions you make across the game. So there are a healthy amount of permutations that can spawn at your epilogue depending on what you did. And some of these characters will even have new cinematics that can play depending on what you did during the story. And a super cool touch to this is, in addition to many of the companions having full-fledged dialogue added with this, there's also going to be a ton of letters. So at this camp, you'll also find a chest full of letters sent to you by the various characters you crossed past with, giving you a couple of paragraphs about what they're doing and oftentimes a thank you. And it's not like this is just five or ten letters, there are quite a few here, as well as quite a few characters at your camp. And you can even find news from the Baldur's Gate itself, so you can read the headlines of what has been going on in the world in the six months since the game's end. As I mentioned before, I don't want to spoil too much of this because it really is just a special moment for you as the player. Because this edition really does make Baldur's Gate 3 just feel so much more impactful. It feels like the perfect cherry on top. You now get a sense of closure with all of the major characters, as well as a variety of the secondary ones. And there really is a surprising attention to detail here. Characters have new clothes, there's tons of new dialogue. Some of the new dialogue even sounds like it could be a DLC teaser if they eventually do bring DLC to Baldur's Gate 3. Make sure to get subscribed for that video. And funny enough, there are even some totally new characters introduced during the epilogue. And in the background, you'll even have some totally new music playing. And while the epilogue is great if you're just interested in jumping into a new game, two new game modes were also added to the game with this update. Honor mode is basically going to be an even more hardcore mode for the game. This will make boss fights even tougher, allowing the bosses in the game to use new abilities. And it's also going to be permadeath, because you're only going to ever be able to make one save and only load that singular save. And the way this will work is your character or even your companions can die, and you'll keep going as long as at least one one person is alive, but there's not ever going to be any loading or reloading saves with this one. If you make a bad decision and somebody dies, you must live with the consequences of your actions, and there's going to be a stricter rule set used throughout this new game mode. So the action economy, as well as damage bonuses, will become more difficult over the course of the game. The game will become gradually harder. Although if you do beat the game on this mode, you'll get some special golden dice, and PS5 users will even get a new achievement for this. As of right now, there is no achievement on Steam. Although thankfully, if your entire party does die during an honor mode playthrough, it does give you the option to continue, it just won't be on honor mode. You'll be able to load the latest save on a custom mode playthrough, which is the other new game mode added. Custom mode will basically give you access to all of the major settings in the game, so you can tweak them to really create your own game mode, perfect for your specific playthrough. So you can make it so you have to only use one save, just like honor mode, but then maybe instead you want some easier enemy aggression, or to make resting at camps cheaper. So if you found certain aspects of the other difficulty modes a bit too easy or even too hard, this allows for a further level of tweaking. One downside of this right now is some of the new features are exclusive to honor mode, so some of those legendary abilities for bosses are not present in this custom mode, those are only on honor mode, but they'll probably be modded in. But at the same time, you can create some pretty interesting combos here, like hiding enemy health, or even using multi-classes on easier difficulties, which is a complete game changer for new playthroughs. But what may genuinely end up being the most important change for this update is if you use a hotkey to short rest. By default, this is the Y key on PC, and if you hit the Y key instead of clicking on the UI button, everyone in your party will make this very satisfying ah sound. That hit the spot. Enough. 
time wasted. Battle awaits. But even beyond that, several performance and crash fixes were described as being a part of Patch 5, and with this update, performance during Act 3 was a focus, and I definitely noticed at least a couple of extra FPS here or there. But unfortunately, for as good as Patch 5 was for performance, there are also quite a few issues, especially if you're playing on PS5. They added a new feature with dynamic resolution for PlayStation 5 users, so the game should lower or up its resolution to hit a certain target FPS number. And maybe it was this change or something else, but as of right now, Patch 5 on PS5 seems to have a lot of problems. After patch 4, there was this issue on PlayStation especially with this lag bug, where basically the game would desync, like you were disconnecting from the server in a multiplayer game, where things around you would just kind of bug out and lag behind your actions. This happened most often in Act 3, and again, it was predominantly for PlayStation 5 users. And while there are some reports of this already being better on PlayStation 5 with patch 5, there are also a plethora of reports of the game just not working at all anymore. You can find tons of threads online right now of players not being able to load into their Act 3 saves at all, where after loading a save, you're met with a black screen until the game just eventually crashes and you have to restart it, with many reports saying that even if they are able to successfully load in, things will only be okay for a couple of seconds before another crash will occur. As of right now, it seems like this is largely on PlayStation 5, so PC players should be fine, but yeah, although some of the lag and performance improvements may be there for PlayStation, it seems like there's also a separate and perhaps even a larger issue caused by this patch, so I wouldn't be shocked if we see a hot fix shortly to address whatever is going on here. But what is easily going to be one of the biggest design changes with this update is now Minthara will actually appear at the Moonrise Towers even if you don't side with her in Act 1. Minthara is one of the big companions in Baldur's Gate 3, largely because people like the way she looks. And before this update, the only way you could actually get her as a companion was you had to be pretty evil. You had to side with her and carry out the goblin raid on the Druid Grove. If you refused to do this, she would be locked out of companionship entirely. But thankfully, with this update, that was changed. So even if you don't side with her, as long as you keep her alive. Now, during Act 2, you'll be able to find her in Moonrise Towers as you always could, but you'll also be able to recruit her as a companion at your camp. And speaking of companions at your camp, the other big change to come with this update is they made companions companion inventory management a million times easier. So now there's a new button in the bottom left of the screen, and when clicking it, you could just manage all of your companion's inventories at your camp, even if they're not in your party. So of course, you can take items from one inventory and place them in another. You can even right-click on the companions and just run up and talk to them very quickly and easily. And of course, the reason this is such a big change is it removes the requirement for you having to run up to each character individually in order to manage their inventories. Now instead, you just have a quick and easy use button. They even fixed an issue with companions at your camp. Previously, they would lose their custom positions at your camp after loading a save game, but now they will stay put, as well as there are a variety of other pretty cool changes to the game overall. Now, after defeating Orin, you're able to loot their outfit. This is suitably disgusting and revolting, but definitely opens up some very unique visuals for your characters. As well as now, if you are making the jump to become half a lithid or make some of your companions this way, it will visually affect their eyes to a greater degree. I mean, honestly, with the rest of your face changing so dramatically, this does feel kind of minor, but it's an interesting change nonetheless. With Patch 5, they made it so the loading screen art will now change as you progress through the main story of the game. Previously, you just always had all of the load screens open to you, but now, as you complete more quests, more load screens will appear, which I personally think is pretty cool. I feel like this makes it feel more like a reward or an accomplishment as you're progressing through the main story. Some of the previous bugginess after Patch 4 with the romance scenes was fixed with this update, so that bugginess is largely gone now but you're also able to take some of the romance scenes even a bit further. The big Ascendant scene with the Starion had some tweaks and some aspects of it restored, so you can now see it in all its glory, except not here, because that's definitely one of the scenes that walks the line of monetizability for YouTube, as well as Withers will now sneakily resurrect any dead companions that fell before the final battle, so once you get to that final cinematic, all of your companions will now once again be present, even if they were deceased just moments before. There are a variety of other smaller changes, but some of the bigger balance overhauls are also quite notable. The Tavern Brawler feat now stacks with damage dealt from Wild Shapes. So Tavern Brawler is a feat that will increase your unarmed damage. Wild Shapes, of course, allows you to turn into a creature if you're a druid. And as a result of being a creature, you're dealing a ton of unarmed damage. And although further testing is needed, it seems like this combination of Wild Shapes and Tavern Brawler is going to be just borderline broken and could deal ridiculous amounts of damage if you build accordingly. As well as another incredible change is our little friend Boo will no longer take damage from being thrown. Boo is, of course, a little hamster summoned from Minsk. And before, when you throw 
him, he took damage, which sucks. That's just really sad. Now he's immortal, at least when thrown in this specific fashion. But also on a higher level, this update brought some broad improvements to enemy AI in combat overall. They improved the physics of characters and walls to prevent NPCs being able to shoot through ceilings inside homes. The combat AI will be a little bit smarter now. They previously weren't appropriately using items, but now they will. As well as attacks against a paralyzed or unconscious target will no longer automatically hit, but any hits that do land will deal critical damage now. Dipping a weapon in a toxic puddle will make the melee attack deal toxic damage for 10 turns instead of previously just until a long rest. And tragically, there was an exploit fixed. You can no longer loot the entire inventory of a trader if they're made unconscious. Now you're going to have a limited selection, just like how it works with dead traders. But overall, that was patch five for Baldur's Gate 3, an absolutely gigantic update for this game and expect more Baldur's Gate 3 content on the horizon. The Xbox release is just around the corner and I'm planning a full suite of videos for that, so get subscribed.